far we've been talking about principal component analysis and the problem with that is that we've been skipping some difficulty with PCA and it's related to categorical variables. Today we're going to talk about correspondence analysis, which is a kind of principal component analysis, but specifically for tables. And we're going to talk about directly and how to do this in R. As usual, we have many choices and I'm going to use factomine R and the function capital C capital A. Okay, as, as in PCA, the output of correspondence analysis is again a table of eigenvalues, which are going to maximize the variance in the table. And then we are going to distinguish between rows, which are, which are related to scores, and columns, which are related to loadings. But in this case, we don't have variables and individuals, because the definition of what is a column and what is a row is completely arbitrary. So I'm going to illustrate you this with an example borrowed from this wonderful book. The authors are French and they have a lot of examples with wine. I don't know the reason why. Okay, so in this case, you are taking a table. Basically, this is a kind of language processing algorithm. So they are counting how many words, um, how many in the list of 30 words appear in the description of different wines. So you can see here that this is a contingency table, a two entrance table. And the good thing is that now we are going to have a tool to analyze this sort of information. This can be used, for instance, in surveys, or in marketing departments, they use that to, to count how many people click on, on different parts of a web page. Okay, let's explore the data. Now remember that we only can apply this for tables. I'm going to use this table, which is a, a very funny table in, in, collected in France in the 1970s. And basically here they're collecting how many uh, home tasks are performed by the wife, by the husband, alternating between them or jointly between them. So you, here you have a description of that. Remember, this is a table, so we are counting how many of these uh, elements appear in this in this other column. Okay. If you don't like to explore tables using uh, the, the numbers, including that table, you have a lot of functions. One of them is called balloon plot, which is going to give you the same information, but now the, the larger the cycle, the larger is going to be the entry in that in that table. Okay. So here you can see that. Basically, wife is taking care of the laundry, main meal, dinner, and so on and so forth. But there, are, there is some overlapping in, in different columns. Okay, so the the idea of correspondence analysis is try to extract as much information as we can from this table. Okay, so let's start with eigenvalues. Now it doesn't make any sense to look at the absolute value of the eigenvalue, and what is important is the cumulative percentage of variance. So you can see that with the first dimension, I only have 50% of variance, but with the first two, I'm on, I'm overpassing the 70% threshold. So probably the first two eigenvalues are good enough. We can also display those eigenvalues, and you can see that. So we have a large gap between the second and the third. So probably the first two dimensions are good enough to describe the data. To me, 90% sounds a lot. Okay, let's explore the correlations. Now remember, this is our table. And now I'm going to plot the rows. Remember that the, now we, we cannot talk about individuals and variables. So I'm talking about rows and columns. And if you take a look at the rows, you see that the first dimension is this dimension here. And this is the second dimension. And the first dimension is strongly correlated with repairs. So this is, has a positive value for the first dimension and negatively correlated with laundry. And the second dimension is strongly correlated with holidays and mildly correlated with these variables. And it's also correlated with repairs. But, but again, repairs is a, a confusing variable because it's well represented in, in a couple of those dimensions. What about the correlation plot? Uh, you can see, uh, evidently, now, as I was saying, you know, repairs is highly positively correlated with dimension one, but also it has a, a good correlation with dimension two. And the first dimension basically could be tell that something like laundry and main meal are the most relevant ones in the negative side and in the positive side, maybe driving and repairs. And the second dimension, you can see that the, the highest correlation is with holidays followed by repairs. We have different tools to explore the contribution of each row to each dimension. And we have this contribution function. And you can see again that the largest bars, the, the, the bars that are well above this horizontal line, are repairs and laundry followed by main meal. But we can neglect the effect of those variables. And you can see that again, going back to our the correlation diagram that this is positively correlated and this, these two are negatively correlated. So essentially these are shape factors. What about the second dimension? Here you can see that clearly holidays is the most relevant, followed by repairs. And again, this is a shape factor because we have different signs for different columns. Okay, so overall we could say that if we restrict our analysis to repairs, laundry, main meal, and holidays, we can have a, a very broad analysis of what is going on in this data set. Okay, let's explore the columns. And now you can see that the, the first dimension is essentially telling me that if the coefficient is large positive, we are talking about husband 
and it's large negative we're talking about the wife and the second dimension is essentially talking about the jolly performed task in the house and alternating is not so relevant so you can see that this is on the axis so it doesn't contribute anything to the first dimension and mildly to the second dimension okay what about the contribution plot again you can see clearly that pattern so the, the first dimension is basically measured by being a husband or a wife and the second dimension is talking about John Lee. So again, you can see how this idea of dimensionality reduction works for co correspondence analysis. So we could neglect a lot of information in the data set and restrict it to different columns and different rows. Okay, so let's put everything together and let's try to interpret the correspondence analysis. This is a biplot. I don't like much biplot, but biplot in the correspondence analysis is interesting if, you're, if you draw these, these arrows there. Why is that? Because now you can see that the length to the origin of, for instance, the rows is going to be the blue lines and the distance of blue lines to the origin. So you can see that repairs has a large blue arrow and that means that it's going to be highly correlated with, with this dimension, okay, and, and in this case with the other dimension. What about the columns? Well, the longer the columns, the, l the larger the, col the, the arrow is going to be the most influence. And again, it's another way to say it, what we have explored before, that only performed tasks are going to be highly relevant for this dimension. And what is interesting in this biplot now is that we can make an interpretation of the angle. So this is completely new, and this doesn't follow for the analysis before. And remember that now, uh, and the difference between correspondence analysis and PCA is that now rows and columns are arbitrary classifications. So now the angle is going to give us a lot of information. So small angles means a strong association. Angles close to 90 degrees is going to indicate no relationship at all. And angles close to 180 degrees is going to, to be related to negative associations. So you can see here, we have a small angle between the blue and the red. So there is acute uh, angle, mean a strong association between holidays and jointly. Here we have almost a, a 90 degree angle. So that means that tidying and jolly task together are not discriminating against each other. So I cannot learn anything looking at tidying and looking at jolly, okay, in, the, in that regard. And here you have a super small angle. So you have a super strong association between husband and repairs. As we have seen in a previous video, we can describe the quality of representation using the cosine square of the variables. And we can use that for coloring. And again, you see that the darker the orange, the, the most represented is that variable into those dimensions. So you can see that alternating is completely relevant in this analysis. I'm talking about the, uh, the variables. You can see that official are, is completely relevant and the most relevant ones are repairs, laundry, holidays, and surprisingly tidying. So this is a variable that hasn't appeared in, in the previous analysis, but it's representative of both dimensions. Why is that? Because probably tithing is the only one that is well represented in, in, in each of these two dimensions. And you can do this interactively using Factor Shiny. So you just have to call correspondence analysis Shiny house task, and then you're going to play a little bit with clicking here and there to reproduce this analysis. So in summary, if you have a table with integer numbers counting the, the coincidences between the two entries of the table, then correspondence analysis is your friend.